The FAA is apparently intent on vetting your expert ability to reverse calculate problems. In this question, they're giving you information about your ground speed and wanting you to calculate an indicated airspeed. Pretty tricky. And this question will require us to use both sides of the E6B flight computer. On a cross-country flight, point A is crossed at 1,500 hours, and the plan is to reach point B at 1,530 hours. In other words, 30 minutes. Use the following information to determine the indicated airspeed required to reach point B on schedule. The distance between A and B is 70 miles, and to fly 70 miles in 30 minutes, let's use our flight computer and calculate our ground speed. Then once we have our ground speed, we'll be able to determine our indicated airspeed. So here's our flight computer where time is always read on the inner scale and distance is always read on the outer scale. And if it's a fuel flow problem, gallons is read on the outer scale. And what we need to do is set 30 minutes across from 70 miles. So here's 30 minutes and we'll set that across from 70 as accurately as we can. And then we read our speed or our rate on the heavy arrow. So it looks like our ground speed is 142 or 143 knots. Now, if you're of such brilliance, you were able to do this math in your head, knowing that 70 miles in 30 minutes equates to 140 miles per hour or knots. You can see our flight computer is just a few knots off. That won't affect our coming closest to the correct answer. And at the end of this video, we'll have a look at how to check the accuracy of your computer. The question wants to know our indicated airspeed. Well, to figure out our airspeed relative to ground speed, we'll have to reverse calculate the impact the winds, both in direction and speed, have so first we'll have to mark our wind direction and speed. The winds are from 310 degrees at 15 knots. You can just move the grommet underneath any one of these lines because you can see they're all equally spaced. And we'll mark our wind vector exactly 15 knots upward from the grommet. And I like to draw an arrow so I can visually see that that's the wind direction. Now the question tells us that we're flying a true course of exactly 270 degrees or straight west. So we see that our winds are a right quartering headwind. We've already determined that our ground speed needs to be 142 and a half knots. So that means that our true air speed, because we have a headwind, has to be 155 knots. And finally, the question is not asking our true airspeed, it's asking our indicated airspeed. Well, if we're flying at sea level, true airspeed is indicated airspeed. But as you climb out of the atmosphere into lower pressure and air density that may not be standard, your airspeed indicator reads erroneously low. Well, we're all the way up to 8,000 feet at minus 10 degrees, so we need to set minus 10 degrees across from 8,000 feet like so. Now we read our true airspeed outside of our indicated airspeed, and I'm coming up with 140 knots. Well, that's not very close to our answers, but it's closest to 137 knots. Don't be too alarmed if your answer doesn't exactly match the choice. The probability is that there's imperfection in your paper computer. The reason our answer was off was in the initial calculation of ground speed. You can check your flight computer by moving the big arrow on the inner scale to six. All the numbers should line up on the inner and outer scale. And in fact, our paper flight computer does not line up perfectly. I'll check using another flight computer I have and set the six directly across from the arrow. And I can see that all of the numbers around the, the perimeter line up just exactly right. And if I set on this one 30 minutes across from 70 miles, it does read exactly 140 knots. And that represents the error in our calculation.